The open meeting of the board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by video conference. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Now to confirm that we have a quorum and that everyone can hear and be heard, I'll call the name of each member. Please respond that you are here and can hear the meeting. Kate Fitzpatrick. Yes. yes. Katie King. Here. <laughs> Dan Matthews. Here. Karen Sonneborg. Here. Okay. Mary Ann Cooley. Here. Marcus Nelson. Here. Avery Newton. Here. Right. And Lakshmi was unable to attend this meeting, uh, so we have the uh, full complement here. Um, so the first item as we look to the agenda, and I guess that will be uh, for an approval of the minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Is there a second? Motion second, any discussion? Hearing none, we come to the vote. Kate Fitzpatrick. Yes. Katie King. Oh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't believe I'm not voting. You're right, Mary Ann Cooley. Yes. Dan Matthews. Yes. Avery Newton. Yes. Marcus Nelson. I was not here back then, so I don't think okay. I can. Okay, you can abstain, okay. <laughs> no, you, abstain. you are still, I'm just gonna say under Robert okay. Rogers, you are still permitted to note as long as they're written and understandable, you may vote, so. That is up to you, Marcus. Yes, up to you, but yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'll abstain for now, so I didn't get a chance okay. to go through them for two, yes. <laughs> Great, thank you. Um, next item on the agenda, and I'm working on two systems here, sorry, is the Emergency Rental Assistance Program Modification Options. And I'll turn that over to Katie King Great. to update this committee. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good to see everyone. Um, just by way of um, quick summary, because we have new members, um, this trust submitted an application to the Community Preservation Committee uh, requesting $120,000 to launch an emergency rental assistance program for Needham residents who had lost uh, income due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So we have been working with Metro West Collaborative Development, the nonprofit um, who we selected uh, on contract to administer this program for us. Um, initially, the program parameters provided 50% uh, of someone's rent um, for a maximum of, of $1,500 per month for three months total. Uh, we realized that that was not gonna spend down the full appropriation. So we came back to this group. Um, you all extended that benefit from three months to six months for all enrollees. Um, and we're back before you again, um, because we're at kind of a final decision point. Again, we, uh, we were uh, unsure how many applicants we would get and how the money would play out over the many months. Um, but we are back before you um, to try to um, spend down the total appropriation. Um, and Mr. Chair, if it's okay, I think I'd like to share my screen just to show um, Please do. two models. Hold on one second. So Karen and Lee worked. Um, can everyone see uh, the model one? Yeah, I see a thumbs up. Okay. Um, so we asked Metro West CD to model two options um, for your consideration. Um, and so what's before you on the screen right now is to extend to August 1 any household that would not reach August through the six months of benefits already committed to them. Um, the rationale um, was um, actually Ms. Cooley had the suggestion that um, a lot of policies are pegged to 60 days after the state of emergency ends. That's coming up next week. So 60 days out brings us to August and really is kind of a rational transition point for a lot of things coming out of the pandemic. Um, so I'll just show that kind of on this model, the first cohort of enrollees that got in early um, in this program would get an extra three months of assistance. The next cohort would get two. Uh, another group would get one extra month. And there are this these households without any green um, who, if you choose this option, would 
um, only get the six months of benefits and nothing additional. Um, so under this model in total, we would be spending $158,346 on those direct rental assistance payments, another uh, between eleven dollars and $12,000 on administ administrative costs. So in total, under this model, we would spend down everything um, with just a $200 uh, and change balance. The second, um, can you all see model two now? Okay. Mm -hmm. So in this model, um, what we're doing is just tacking on one additional month for all households currently enrolled, regardless of when they came in. Um, so that's pretty straightforward um, and it would bring us out to the last assistance check going out in December. So we'd still kind of wrap up in this calendar year. Uh, this model uh, would not spend down quite as much. So we'd be spending just over $151,000. And once we add in the administrative costs, we would still have a balance of just over $7,000 that would revert back to the CPC. Um, <laughs> I just make one final note that we did reconfirm um, with our finance team that the $100,000 of originally appropriated um, CPA, uh, CPC funds that uh, go towards rental assistance is CARES uh, reimbursement eligible at 100%. Um, so whether um, you decide now to spend down the remaining balance and in what version we do anticipate being able to uh, revert back the $100,000 um, back to the CPC. It's just a matter of timing and when those reimbursements come back to the town. Um, so with that, I'll just open it up for questions and discussion. Great, and just before you do the, the how about the other, so it's 150,000, right? What's the, what would be the total spend down? 150, is that? Or is the whole 100,000 that we're, what's the whole, I'm sorry, the whole allocated amount? So we had 120,000 from the CPC and then there yes. was another $50,000 from Metro West, uh, the foundation for Metro West. Right, so in and 100,000, okay, I'm sorry, 100,000 was, okay, thank you. All right, questions on the two different proposals, Marianne. Uh, I, I don't have a question, but I would say that I am in favor of getting the funds in the hands of people who need them. So. Thank you. Discussion? Marcus? Yes, sir. Um, yeah, I agree with Mary Ann said. And then also I had a question, Katie, we said about the $100,000 going back. So that's a guarantee that they would get that back or is that a possibility for the CPC to get that? Um, so barring any changes at the state or federal level, um, I think <laughs> we feel confident, yes, that we would get it back. Okay. I just, yeah, I was just clarifying. Just so yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Katie, do you or, and Karen have a recommendation for which option would be preferred? So we discussed it and I think, you know, it's really a question of what feels more equitable in my mind, you know, under the getting to August model, some people would be getting upwards of nine months, other people just six. Um, and in the other version, it's really across the board, everyone gets seven months. Um, so Karen, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, Metro West CD felt like both were administratively um, kind of on balance one with the other. So in that sense, we, there is not a recommended preference. Okay, thank you. I guess my preference, if uh, it was allocated, uh, you know, from town meeting the CPC, the intent was to spend it down um, and, and give as much distribution as we could to people who are applying. But that's where I'm at. Um, Dan, any thoughts or? I guess just the one question: when people, if you're extending people's um, benefits by uh, a certain amounts, is there any? Re check in or something to see that they're still in, in need or they're disqualified and we keep them in the program. Karen, you wanna take that one? If you don't mind. Uh, yes, Metro West CD hasn't gone back and done all the due diligence and collecting all the tax um, information and pay stubs, but they have um, asked people to sign an affidavit that basically says that they still 
have experienced a loss of income due to uh, COVID and, or, and provide some um, evidence of continued unemployment um, or rearages. So Sorry, I was getting a little communication. Are, you know, demonstrating so, need. So, and did they, and uh, so when, I'm not really talking about like, you know, auditing people, but the idea of, of saying, are you still, are you still in need of this, this funding under the standards of the program? Did they certify that in some form to get the extension? But they're doing what I mentioned in the extensions. They are asking people to sign an affidavit and okay. provide yeah. some evidence that they are continue to lose uh, income or have arrearages. Yeah. Thank you. Does that answer your question, Dan? I think it does. It does. Okay. It doesn't help me decide between the two options, but it answers my question. Okay. Thank you. Um, Avery, any thoughts? So you're looking for a vote of this board tonight, I'm assuming, right? Okay. Any, any further on Marianne? If you would like a motion, I'd offer a motion. Yeah, uh, I would like to. And then we can continue to discuss, but I would discuss. move that the board or the housing trust recommend adoption of option one um, to assist those in need through the August timeframe. Second. Motion and a second. Discussion on that motion. Hearing none, we will come to the vote. Uh, Marcus? Yes. Avery? Yes. Dan? Yes. Marianne? Yes. Kate? And the chair votes yes. That's unanimous. Good, okay. Next item on the agenda is an update. Um, Karen, do you wanna take that uh, on the Needham Housing Authority? Sure. Um, I've been working with the uh, Housing Authority uh, as part of a selection committee uh, to review the three proposals that they received uh, with respect to their uh, request for proposals to hire a development consultant to help them sort out the best uh, way to modernize and uh, refinance, redevelop some of their properties um, and to really assist them with making applications and uh, moving forward. Uh, this, has, as you know, has been discussed for years, but they're finally in a place of uh, of, uh, of you know, making some real progress. So we are meeting uh, regularly uh, on the proposals that we see three. It looks like they're all responsive uh, proposals and we'll be uh, evaluating uh, them and, and there'll be a recommendation to uh, the NHA board. Thank you. Uh, Marianne? Karen, I'm wondering if there's a timeline that you envision. And I also am just wondering, or I would like to know, of the three that are responsive, do they all have, in fact, a positive track record of doing what we're hoping that they're doing? They all have experience. And the timeline, I got to say, Reg is running the ship in a very, very, um, uh, in a, in doing all the due diligence he needs to do. And he does have a timeline. Uh, given the meetings, they're probably going up a little bit, but we're talking about trying to make a decision, a recommendation to the board in a month's time. Uh, so it's moving pretty quickly. But um, all the proposals uh, showed some experience um, to a greater or lesser degree with uh, what, what's been asked. Great. So Karen, you're hoping by our next meeting we'll have yeah. a decision. Okay. Kate? Right. I just wanted to note that um, the Reg and um, Angie and potentially other members of the Housing Authority are coming to your meeting on the 22nd to talk mm -hmm. about um, particularly the issue, um, new legislation about tenant membership on the Housing Authority and how to implement that, but also be an opportunity for Reg to outline um, to the board in detail uh, at that time about um, that schedule. 
Thank you. Marianne? We may already have this, but I'm wondering, can you, if we do have it, could you please resend the RFP? Or if we don't have it, could you send it one or the other? <laughs> thank you. Great, yep. thank you. Or Karen, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Avery? There, I'm sorry, Karen, I might have missed this in the, in the details earlier. So when you say the three proposals, would the goal be to choose one from the three or potentially fund up to three um, or, or select up to three? What's the what's the one? One. OK, thank you. Thank you. Further discussion? Well, OK, seeing and hearing. Not, oh, Marcus. Yeah, so after the one of the three are um, you know, brought to and approved um, is Reg, I, I feel like is going to detail it maybe on the 22nd of what the next step would be, or we already know what, what comes after that and in, in how we proceed. Karen? Karen. Well, I don't know the time. I, I, I think Reg's intention is to keep everybody in the loop on what's being um, recommended. But uh, the first major effort a decision is being made by the selection committee. It'll be brought before the the uh, NHA board uh, for uh, consideration and adoption, um, and then there will be you know arrangements made with the uh, with the uh, selected contractor. Um, I you know I, I know given Reg's interest in kind of staying. Um, keeping everybody in the loop that people will have um, a pretty good idea. And I think on the, the meeting of the 20 seconds will be an opportunity for, to get some additional information from him on uh, the process and the time frame. Thank you, Ken. Mm -hmm. And I think the next meeting of this uh, Affordable Housing Trust, we can have a discussion either with him or Karen on the update and, and get clarification and ask our questions at that time too. So there will be opportunity. Yeah. Uh, to get more details on this, but this is a good, nice step forward. And I know Reg yeah. is championing this uh, and passionate, which is always two good things to, <laughs> to have in somebody. So yeah. great. Um, any further discussion? Okay, seeing and hearing none, I ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. second. Okay, motion and second. Uh, Kate. Yes. Marianne. Yes. Karen. I'm, I'm sorry, Dan. I'm sorry, I'm going through Dan. I'll get it one day. Dan? Yes. No, thank you. Marcus? Yes. Avery? Yes. And the chair votes yes. Thank you. See you soon. All right. Night, Avery.